Hi, Paul from Valaticus here. I hope you're well. Um, a, um, a bit of a Polish treat today. I'm going to do some flights from uh, some Polish airports. And this is by the scenery designer Dushovetsky. Um, Dushovetsky Design. Um, so he has, um, I believe he's Polish, and he um, has a number of um, Polish airfields that he has in various collections. Um, today we're going to be flying um, a two stop leg starting at Gdansk in northern Poland um, flying to Warsaw um, and then we're going to be making another flight on from there very short flights today I'm going to be flying the Challenger 300 which is my favorite aircraft um, and uh, you can see um, we're starting Gdansk uh, it's not the greatest of weather in fact it actually be below our minimum it's um, reporting at 50 meters visibility uh, which is not really very good uh, let's have a look at the forecast uh, for our initial leg. Uh, so you can see um, Gdansk, um, 50 metres. Um, it's the current weather. Um, it is forecast to improve. Uh, we would not actually be able to go legally now if this was a royal flight, uh, but we're going to use some um, artistic licence and uh, going to try and depart in that today. Um, Warsaw, Chopin Airport, um, is currently cav OK. Um, which means uh, the weather's reached a certain standard. Um, so that's uh, that's good. I think it's just uh, Gdansk that's engulfed in fog at the moment. Um, our alternate uh, Herringsdorf is 3.6 kilometres in mist. Um, so that's quite doable as an alternate. Let's have a look at the route. I've um, done this already, um, set this all already up in Navigraph charts um, using the new app for iOS uh, as of October 2019. Um, this is running pretty well. I had a few teething problems with it, but downloaded an update and it seems to be working okay. We're going to be departing Gdansk using the Irlun 2 hotel departure, uh, which just brings us out to Irlun, uh, flying westerly initially, um, and then routing down to Warsaw. Uh, now Warsaw is a standalone package um, and uh, Dvoshetsky also creates, has created a scenery file for Warsaw City um, which I've got installed on here as well. Um, so we'll take a look at that in, in flight. Let's check the fuel now for this initial leg. What we're going to do is fly down to Warsaw and then we'll fill up there. I'll try and do a quite short turnaround there. So block fuel 4146 pounds and I've already loaded 4200 uh, so that's um, adequate, it's just barely adequate but it's a short flight. Okay so let's have a look at the, uh, the weather. Um, this is the uh, built-in uh, weather app on the iPad here and uh, it's just confirming what we're seeing on the forecast there. Okay, uh, right, let's go through the checklist and set it all up. So, standby instruments first of all, and battery on. Uh, external power is connected at the moment, we'll leave that on for the moment. Left and right bleed switches off, have lights on, and no smoking lights are on. Left and right fuel pumps auto. APU switch, let's uh, start the APU now. Okay, that seems to be running. Um, we'll put that onto ECS. So take a bleed from the APU, cross bleed, and nav source to air. Okay, so we now have uh, all our air running in there. We'll just check electric. And we're currently still running off the external power, so we can now click to switch over to APU. And you can see that reflected on the electric panel. And we can switch that off for the moment. Fuel quantity, uh, that's correct. The balance is good. Stem instruments are okay. Clock resets. And um, we'll just change that to UT, um, UTC time. Uh, one thing I should say is um, if you set this 
clock um, or, or the date differently. Of course, the metals, the actual weather, um, if you've got live weather, will be dated and timed for today, the current time. Um, so it's just one thing it might add a little bit of confusion. So in this case, I've set us up about, um, it's about seven o'clock in the morning, um, uh, maybe actually um, just before six here. Um, but um, it's taking the weather, it's actually evening in Britain here, and it's taking the weather from the evening, live weather from uh, Gdansk. Um, okay. Uh, nose wheel steering off. Uh, next thing is the F FMS, we'll set that up. So uh, I already have a route in Navgraf charts, so I can just switch from map view we will put in the high high altitudes map. Um, now I've also got this available on the uh, to put into the um, FMS on the Challenger. So we just go to the route menu, company route list, and we're looking for EPGD. Uh, it's that one there. Okay, um, quick check through on the FMS. Uh, so our first point is Erlen, and then Gruda, and then Sorex is the final point on the November 191 airway. And that brings us into the arrival into Warsaw. So that's good. Uh, set up the departure now. So departure from Gdansk. Um, so um, we're, we're going to take runway 29, which is the westerly. And it's the Erler 2 Hotel, which is this one here. And execute that. And that should coordinate up with our routing. And then for our arrival into Warsaw, so um, now we're going to be landing runway 15, um, which is a visual approach. Um, so, uh, but the weather is looking good. We'll just uh, bring it up on the iPad in a moment. Um, so we can actually go for the RNAV 15. Um, I'll go via Whiskey Alpha 616. Um, and it's the Sorry 3 Papa is the um, arrival, which is that one there. I think I know what's happened here. I'm just going to clear that. There's a certain sequence in which you have to do this. So select that one first, and then I'll have one five, and that transition. And then we have a look at the route itself. Uh, and actually, while we're at it, let's put the cruise altitude in as well, which is two seven zero. Okay. Sure, that won't be an issue. And have a look at the legs. And what we're looking for is discontinuities here. So, Sorex, just bridge that gap, execute. And there's another one there. Let's clear that message. Six one three after Osnut execute, and that should now be the whole route without any gaps. Oops, what's that? All right, I don't know. There's a bit of a bug actually with this, it's quite buggy. Six one four, let's see, six one six. And that's, there's lots of uh, waypoints on this particular flight, actually, more so than you normally see. So that's the departure uh, from uh, Gdansk and the arrival into Warsaw all set up. Um, next thing will be to set up some frequencies. I've got the 
um, ATIS set up, uh, although I wasn't able to get any audio for some reason, but that's frequency is set up on COM2. And then um, for Warsaw, the ATIS is set up on the recall for COM2. Um, we're not going to be using uh, an ILS in Warsaw that's going to be the RNAV approach, so nothing needs to go in there. So all we need to do is put in um, a, an ATC code. So let's make something up 1577, for example, and stick that in there. Okay, and we just scroll through and have a look. Um, climb up to flight level 7270. And we're not there very long, just uh, a few miles really, and then uh, into the descent into Warsaw, so it's a very short flight. Okay, let's go through the rest of the checklist. So left and right window shield heat. Uh, pressurization panel, that's the next one. Um, so let's, um, let's find the elevation at Warsaw. Uh, elevation's about 350, 360, so we'll put 350 in there. And this is obviously for pressurization, so 350 set. Emergency lights. Test those first of all, and then back to auto. Stabilize stabilizer trim up to 7.2 is my favorite setting there we go so that's set altimeters um well let's have a quick reminder here so this is Gdansk and we'll just refresh it there's no change it's 1019 i have already set that that's hectopascal so that's correct um, while we're at it let's have a look at the warsaw weather so that's epwa And that's Cab OK. Temperature 14, 12, 1021. So that's good. Let um, me just get rid of that for the moment. OK. Um, next thing is the avionics. So we are going to be following the uh, FMS. So we'll select that as the default navigation source. Um, and then um, we'll be able to switch into nav mode when we've um, lifted off the ground. V speeds, I'm going to leave the, the defaults here. I used to look these up on each flight, but you know, if the airport is up to a thousand feet AGL, um, uh, above sea level rather, and temperatures sort of between 10 and 20 degrees, um, and your weight is not huge, then those, those are always going to be the minimum figures anyway. So I'm going to just leave them as they are. Um, and then CAS messages, just check for anything unusual, which is, um, there's nothing uh, to worry about there. Okay, we're ready to push back. Uh, I'm just going to do the rest of the checks. So we'll um, just go to the external view here and close the door up. It's nice and quiet now. Next thing is the part brake. Thrust levers. Make sure we're getting some response. A spoiler won't see any effect until the hydraulics are on. Strobe switch on. Uh, engine run switches can come on now. We need to check. Uh, just We're going to stop there on the checklist until uh, we've had a pushback and we're going to runway 29 so let's just bring up the airport plan and you can see where we are just on the eastern edge of the runway uh, western edge of the airport ra so i've uh, got a bit of a taxi down there and i'm going to leave it as is and we could request 11 for departure but i'm going to leave it as is um, and so we've got a bit of a, a long taxi uh, let's request uh, the pushback see where we're going so one thing to notice here is a little bit of a fault with the scenery um, it's probably me as much as anything uh, but there seems to be the default scenery and the overlay seems to be visible at the same time and you also see that at this airport and actually I think all of the airports in volume one of the Polish airport collection um, I have noticed all of those have the same problem 
And we are. Okay, so we'll let him do his thing. Yeah, visibility is not very good. And I was going to show you this airport because um, it's one of Dushovetsky's um, airports. It does a pretty good job. Uh, details are really nice. Ground markings, textures are good. Um, maybe not quite up to Orbix standard, but it's um, but um, they're very good value packages. Um, and obviously, if you want somewhere interesting to fly, um, then it's well worth getting uh, one of his packages and trying it out. So we're going from um, uh, Gdansk. Um, Gdansk is part of Volume One, um, and then we're going to Warsaw, which is a standalone package, and the Warsaw city is available separately. Okay. Okay, parking brake released. Go for the external view. Now this um, better pushwork doesn't always work, um, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, on this occasion it will work. Now we'll go for engine start. So starting the right-hand engine now. Uh, right hand engine generator is online. I'll go for the left. Okay, both engines started and in in the green. Uh, generators are, are looking good. Now we'll switch the hydraulics on. And we can bring up the anti-ice page, which will be the next thing you want to do. Uh, we can test that now. Parking brake set. And we can just go ahead with the rest of the controls. So flaps 10 degrees. Trim is set. Flight control, so we can check now. So banking right, center, banking left, center, goes up, and center, goes down, and center. Let's just give him the thumbs up. Uh, spoilers check. And rudder right, centre, rudder left, and centre. Okay. Your damper is on ECAS messages, they're fairly standard, so you've got the probe heat warning, parking brake is on, uh, the wing heat's on at the moment, cross bleed is open, so they're fairly standard. Passenger briefing. Just let him uh, do his thing. Um, passenger briefing, we'll assume they've been briefed. Um, wing and engine anti-ice if required. Well, it's 11 degrees and we're going to be above any moisture, I think, before we hit zero. So not required. Aircraft lighting. Okay, smoking uh, seatbelt sign. We'll switch that onto seatbelts now. Taxi light now. He has disappeared. And just check he's there. You can almost not see him. So that's good. Uh, nose wheel steering is on at the moment. Parking brake release when we're ready to taxi. Now this is where we really will benefit by having a moving map. Um, so I'm just going to zoom into that and we'll be using this quite significantly. Um, so what we're going to do is going to um, try and do it a right. It's actually a little difficult to see the markings here. We're going to do a right into the um, Alpha taxiway. Go down to Alpha 1, 
um, and um, on the way we can do our regular checks. Okay, here we go. Okay, right, check. There's our right turn there. Starting to worry a little bit there with the visibility so low. We really do depend on these now. And that will take us to the other side of these parked aircraft. And then we should be doing a left turn. And you can see the opportunity for a Incursion, runway incursions in this sort of weather as well. Okay, let's uh, go ahead with some of the taxi checks. So, flight instruments green, reverse check, just speed up a little bit, not too much. Idle, reverse, white, reverse, green, reverse, idle, white, and it disappears. Just do a little bit of power from one of the engines. Uh, flaps we've got set seven, uh, trim 7.2 flaps 10 degrees and uh, it's just a straight line from here uh, there's a looks like another right turn here I think I'm not quite on the um, alpha taxiway yet there it is as I say you have to be very careful not to in incur the uh, runway inadvertently Um, so conditions are dry, uh, so no change to the um, V speeds. Uh, nav equipments, I'll just check that in a minute. So we're on FMS, which is what we want. Just a very slow taxi here. As I say, this would be below our minima takeoff, but um, it's a simulator. So we'll switch the transponder on next. Radar, um, we can go for weather. Uh, we have that already. There's not much terrain around here. Um, the weather's not really anything to worry about here, though. It's just fog. Um, Anti-ice as well, not required. Okay, here we go. Just the... Uh, Turn the taxi and the uh, landing lights on. I've got to know which of the centre lines to follow. So it shouldn't, we shouldn't really have two. I'm just going to hold short a moment. Um, probes can go on. Strobes full. Landing lights on. And the nose wheel landing light can go on as well. Um, we can switch the anti-ice off, didn't mean to keep that on, not required for takeoff as I said. Um, make sure we're clear for takeoff and let's go. And a cross bleed can come off as well. So this is bleeds off for takeoff today. I'll follow the um, centre line with the lights, probably a safer option. Oh, looks like it <laughs> come nose to nose with another aircraft. Okay. Well, imagine he's not there. Okay, here we go. Take off power. Of 
greens. Speed alive, V1, and rotate. Climb power set. Now, flaps can come up now. And I'm going to switch to nav mode, put it onto the FMS. And you see the route out to um, 541 and left. And then just a number of those GD routes. So there we are. Typical fog weather just above the cloud within a few thousand feet, which is great. We have to be very careful with this aircraft not to overspeed it. So it's 5,000. Okay, let's um, say we've contacted departures and we're cleared up to 12,000. Put on flight level change. Okay. And once sorting itself out, we can do the after takeoff checks, which is landing gear up, flaps are up, bone lights will keep on till 10,000, anti ice is not required, leads can come on now, APU can go off, A transition level, well, we're past that now, so we hit the button to go on to hectopascals uh, 1013, which is correct. Uh, we're looking to switch landing lights off at 10,000. I think you can go up to 250 as well on the speed. Make sure we're following the correct route. So five four two, just um, we're just um, going towards. We just passed five four one, and we're putting it to vertical speed mode. And let's bring that down a little bit, three thousand, and we can up the altitude there as well. We've got to, uh, we've got to two seven zero now. It's going to increase the speed a little bit. There we go. So, past 10,000, landing lights can come off. And uh, I think we're safe enough with smooth air so we can bring the seatbelt sign off as well. I think this is just very local weather, so we should be flying out of this before long. And I'm going to tag the speed at about 300 knots and we will continue climbing at 300 indicated. There we go. happen there but I was um, climbing on slightly reduced power it should be climb power the aircraft has a fantastic rate of climb it's really impressive And you know when you're in the cruise or you're um, 
um, certainly a sort of later stages of the climb uh, because all the lights are out, which is um, interesting because some lights indicate they're off and some indicate they're on, but that's designed about uh, around the principle of having all the lights off in the cruise. Um, but it takes you a while to get used to that. No change to the weather at Warsaw. Just approaching our cruise level 270. Top of descent, 60 miles. So I think we can t take the SID off the map view. And we could put the arrival on just in anticipation. We are still a distance away from that. And you see the weather's um, clear ahead, so that's kind of what I was hoping for. Just a bit of local crap around the uh, Gdansk area, but uh, it's like it's um, it's probably uh, uh, the impact of the sea. And of course, do bear in mind it's um, it's night at, at the moment. That's the weather it's taking from is at night, um, but we're actually doing this flight early in the morning. Uh, the other thing I like to do on these flights is a um, quick fuel check. Um, so Erlon, let's go to the um, the plan and go down to Erlon. Uh, 
Um, we should have 3.3 at Erlen. And we've got 3.4 something, so our fuel is slightly better than planned, which is good. It's always comforting. Good time now, uh, while we're in the cruise, to just quickly have a look at the arrival. Let's look at the RNAV. And so we've elected to go from WA616, which you can see out there. I'll be joining that at 3,800 feet. And you see that uh, here just at the start of the orange line. So that route, the arrival, is quite a long way around. Um, it could be that we're given a shortcut. Uh, but the flight management computer is computing our descents based on that journey. So we have to be a little bit careful. Um, if we try to cut the corner and we cut off several miles, um, we might find ourselves um, in a sort of... 10,000 foot a minute descent because the flight management computer is trying to make up for the lack of distance. So just have to be a little careful. And I'm going to give us a bit of a shortcut. So I'm going to say from Sorex, uh, we're going to go direct to Whiskey Alpha 618. Uh, it means we should have already started our descent. So I'm just going to click VNAV and then flight level change. And we'll come down. Looks like we're going to do this manually. Uh, let's see what we're aiming at here. 3800 need to be above. I'll bring this down manually. So go down to about uh, 2000. 500 I suppose will be good approximately uh, we'll just bring the throttle back to idle and stick in some um, spoiler as well so it's a little bit of a, um, a rapid descent See what's happened there. It's not meant to have auto throttle, that's an option. Uh, it's not actually part of the aircraft. Uh, it's an option on the aircraft, but it's not realistic. 
So that's what seems to happen actually on this. Sometimes it will go into auto throttle mode. Now in theory, uh, descending to a level below the transition altitude, um, we should be able to put that onto local altimeter, but I'm going to keep it on flight levels for now. Uh, just in case ATC were to come back and say, okay, level of flight level 200 uh, makes it a lot easier to know where flight level 200 is. So we can update on Navigraph if it's an option really. So from Sorix, um, we need to get that route 618. Okay, it's going to follow the um, arrival pattern, so actually there's no way I can edit that easily, so I'll leave it as is. But from Sorix, we're going direct to Whiskey Alpha 618. just um, steepen the descent a little bit. And you see on here um, the cabin altitude adjustment um, the smaller number is the feet per minute so that's quite tolerable that's a relatively mild descent so even though we're doing 3,000 feet a minute the um, passengers will only experience about 500. We're switching over to the um, RNAV uh, approach plate now. And this pretty well mirrors the um, arrival. We're just going to start slowing us down a little bit. We still have a bit of um, distance to go until 10,000 feet. But it doesn't harm to actually start reducing the speed. Uh, have a look at the descent checks. Um, destination ATIS. Well, just check and you can update this. So it's 1021 is the uh, altimeter setting. Where they're still looking good. Pressurization landing altitude is set, that's not changed. Wing anti ice and engine anti ice is not required. And altimeters um, we will set when we get um, nearer the transition altitude. Left and right landing light below 10,000 will come on, and the uh, smoking seatbelt sign will come on. Fuel quantities and um, balance is good, and approach aids are uh, on have approach, no need to identify. I'm going to bring full spoiler now to get the uh, speed starting to come down. And we can stick the seatbelt sign on 
and the landing lights can come on as well. It's going to reduce the rate of descent a little. And we're going to set 4000 actually because at WA614 we're meant to be above 3800. 3800. Make sure we don't lose too much speed. Let's keep it at 250. Okay, I'm going to disregard that actually and land runway 15, uh, which was the original plan. I'm going to just reduce the rate right of descent a little. I obviously need to add a little bit of power in as well. I don't want to get too low too soon. So this is just um, stock scenery for Poland. But as we get near to Warsaw, um, you'll start to see um, the fruits of Dzhvietsky's um, uh, city um, for Warsaw and the airport as well. Very detailed, lovely. And we can go to local altimeter now, which is 1021. And we're now on the final approach course, albeit a very extended centre line. Uh, you can actually see the airport just in the um, distance there. Just about make it out.
and you can just about make out the city in the distance there. There it is. And now locked on the uh, glide slope. I'll stop bringing the speed back as well. Okay, PU and bleeds, so if you can stay off, bleeds can remain on as well. Um, landing data is set, approach set up, uh, crew have been briefed, missed approach uh, is direct to WA697. Um, and left and right hydraulic pumps are remain on auto. Landing gear is down, landing lights are set, flaps is 20 now. Approach looks good. And uh, bringing the final stage now. And uh, our VREF is 117. That's the uh, this Warsaw City. Let's pull it off. Miss that one, let's go for the next. Oh, I'll take that one. Shouldn't really do this, but uh, needs must.
Okay, that one looks to come off. Taxes on stripes off. And welcome to Warsaw. So this really is a, a lovely um, air, airport um, uh, in terms of the um, the detail. Um, when I've parked up, I'll take you for a quick tour. Let's do it right here. Um, and then we're going to fuel up and uh, plan the um, remaining leg. Sure, to turn the APU on as well. So hopefully, for me, it starts up rather quickly. Those are all staring off. Windshield heat's off. Engine rod switch is off. Emergency lights off. Taxi lights off. Strobes off. Seatbelt signs off. And hydraulics can come off as well. Okay, open that up. So here we are at Warsaw. Let's go for a quick tour. So this is the main terminal building, uh, really nicely detailed. And we'll just go through the wall. You see, actually, you go into the terminal. It's um, certainly true of some of uh, Dushovetsky's um, designs, scenery designs. There's actually a lot of people in this one as well. It's a very popular place. And then if we just come outside, we've got the uh, Marriott Hotel, uh, sorry, the Renaissance Hotel. I think this is the Marriott over here. Yeah, there we go. And um, a really nice detail for the um, outside if you fly helicopters or whatever, you might appreciate this more than fixed wing, uh, but it's beautifully designed. Um, and then we've got some cargo operations, I think, over this side of the airport. It's quite a big airport as well. And then I presume this is the um, an old control tower over here. Um, it's normally the way it works. And then um, a sort of GA section. Sorry if I'm making you seasick with this movement. Um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of happening here. It's good, good textures, good detail. Uh, so it's not meant to be a full review. Uh, but um, it's, this is definitely worth having um, this package, Volume 1. Um, and then, I'll say, the main terminal here. Not many aircraft there at the moment. Right, let's plan the next stage. Okay, um, I already created a flight plan, um, which I'm going to load up now. That's um, from Warsaw to EPWR. I cannot remember what that place is called, so my apologies for that. Um, so we'll load the flight plan up, have a look at the quick, quick look at the map. Relatively short flight. 
Uh, so Rocklaw is the uh, destination there. So another short hop. Uh, just check everything's okay. Um, Challenger aircraft um, with the part runway one five um, arrive runway two nine at Rocklaw, um, which will be quite convenient for us. So let's generate the FP. There it is. Okay, so that's done. Um, give it a minute, and I think Sim Brief download automatically triggers at some point. I don't see that happening yet. If not, I can start that manually. Uh, so Sim Brief downloader is a way in which it can share the plan with different apps. Um, so I have it share flight plan with the um, defaults, um, the uh, default FMS in X-Plane, which is what the Challenger 300 uses, but you can also configure it to use the FMS of the aircraft that you use. That wasn't quite the message I was expecting. Um, I will start Sim Brief downloaded manually. There we are. Um, normally it tr it's triggered when you um, when you generate the FP for a flight. Um, so I've got it to export to the default FMS and also to a PDF document. So let's just confirm that's what we want it to do. It just saves a little bit of time. And um, we can quit out of that now. So from that point, it's um, fairly easy to pick up from um, Navigraph, Navigraph charts. Uh, so we'll just create a new flight. Import from Simbrief. Um, so that's um, Warsaw to Rocklaw. Um, so we'll just click Save Flight. And we'll close this little thing here. And it shows the new route. Um, so that's got all the detail in there. We should be able to pick that up from um, our flight management computer as well. Uh, the other thing I need to do is just pick up from, uh, no, not that one, that one there. So we'll close this down. This is the old flight plan and this is the new one. So EPWA to EPWR, uh, fuel, block fuel for 791. So we'll load that in a moment. Let's just have a quick look at the weather. So, Cabo K at Chopin, where we are at the moment, Cabo K at Rocklaw, um, winds, um, no wind, basically, so we'll land in the direction of travel, which is 29, uh, QNH 1021 hexapascals, um, becoming between 21 and 23, 2000 in mist. Now, that does affect us, actually, because it is currently 9.43 local time in Britain, uh, which is... Um, 8.43 UTC, uh, so that may become an issue, but it's well within our limits. That's not really going to worry us too much. Um, but just let me remind myself, 4791 is the fuel. Let's go and load that first. That'll do. And apply changes. So that's the fuel loaded. Uh, let's have a look at the chops. And what I'll do is just get. Um, I need to get open some of the charts. There's one thing I don't like so much about Navigraph charts um, is there's no easy way really for, that I found in, in terms of actually bringing on things like the instrument departures and the taxiways. Um, so. I can click on, for example, the SOX A6 Delta, um, and when that's loaded up, I can overlay that onto the chart. Uh, that's already on the route, um, but there's no apparent way from here to add that to your uh, little um, thing on the bottom of the screen. See, that's taking forever. One way I have found, God, one way I have found is uh, we can click on the airport there and just add them manually, uh, which is a bit of a pain to be honest. 
So that's the SOX A6 Delta. Gone past it, SOX A6 Delta, there we are. And that's the SID. We'll tag that, it's on the bottom now. And we'll put the airports that on the bottom as well. That's all we need for Warsaw. Let's do the same for Rocklaw now. So I say this, it'd be great actually if it automatically gave you the option of putting the um, main airport plan and, and the instrument departure from your departure point the, and then the arrival, the approach and the airport plan for your um, arrival uh, point. Um, that would be an improvement in usability in my opinion. Um, so what we're looking at here is the UVIV-1 uniform uh, arrival. And that one. The approach is runway two nine. I think that's. Uh, I don't think that's an instrument approach. Not that we're worried today. Oh no, there is one. ILS two nine. We'll take that. Um, so that's on the bottom, and the final one is the taxi chart. That'll be the one. Tag that. Close close so we've got five that's normal as i say you know that'd be great if you could hit a button and it will automatically add those for you because we've already chosen the approach the arrival the sid and it knows the airport so that could be automated okay let us now uh, pick up that from the fms but i'm going to start by going through the checklist again um, most of the things are already on that need to be on uh, but we just need to check. So standby instruments are on, left and right batteries on, external power, well, we've got APU running and we'll leave that running. Left and right bleed switches off, nav lights, uh, I've left those on. Uh, no smoking is on, left and right fuel pumps are on auto, APU switch not required as it's running already, external power is not required, ECS page we can ignore, APU bleed switch, um, well, put the bleed on, I think. Um, as we don't have engine bleed at the moment. Cross bleed switch open. Um, air source is normal still. Fuel quantity check. Well, we just fueled up, have sufficient quantity for the flight and the balance is good. Um, standby instruments check, they're good. Uh, clock, um, no, no changes needed on the clock. Nunes wheel steering is off at the moment. FMS, let's do that. So uh, we can pick up on the route, go to the route menu, company route, um, and we want um, this one, I think, EPWR, and it's EPWA, that one. There we go. It's quite a, quite a simple route, really. Um, crucial things we need to add here will be the departure. Um, so departure from EPWA, uh, one five. And then it's the SOXA6 Delta, which is that one, execute. Um, we don't have a cruise altitude in there. Let's just see what that's meant to be. 2-9-er. Oh, sorry, that's, um, that's wrong with 2 9 -er. Let's have a look at the route itself. 280 cruise altitude. Two eight zero cruise. I don't know why we can't achieve a two eight zero cruise, but I'm sure we will be able to. Um, let's set the arrival data back to Navigraph charts. Um, so it's the um, UVIV one uniform. Um, Hang on, what's going on here? Right, arrival, EPWR. Let's just switch that off. We have one uniform, is the one there, and that's ILS29. Execute. And then gap filling. 
So there's Uviv. Okay. So let's see if we can do this. Um. I've got a bit of duplication there, never mind. Okay, that should be all the gaps done. Okay, and cruise looks good. Um, actually, 280. That white's blanked it out. Okay, there we go. I think that's fine now. So, we're up at 280 for a very short time. Uh, what else do we need? Well, um, Skork, we'll probably have another Skork here, so two, three, seven, four, Skork. And while we're at it, just get the uh, ILS localizer frequency, which is 10, 1, 10, 3. Actually, ironically, we already have that in there. Um, course will be 292. Let's see if we can put that in. Actually, it's not for ILS, it's not really, um, it's automatically set anyway, so that's not really... Something we need to worry about. Uh, put the ATIS 12433. 24.33. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's the um, FMS setup. Uh, left and right window shield heats can come on now. Pressurization landing altitude. So we are. Airport elevation for just over 400 feet. So, switch this up to 400. There we are. So that's set. Emergency lights. And auto. Stabilizer, stabilizer trim, 7.2 we want. Always tends to work well. Altimeters, well, we're on 1021 and that looking that's looking good at the moment. Avionics, so we're still on nav source and we'll keep it on that for departure. The takeoff data um, is standard and that's not going to change. Uh, again, we're not high enough. Temperature's not deep, uh, deviant enough from standard, so I can tell with hand on heart that's going to be fine. CAS message is nothing unusual there, so we're ready to close up the door and get on our way. No, I've just done that on a um, keyboard shortcut. There it is. Okay, we'll set the parking brake on, make sure that is set and looks like it's good. And thrust levers, let's make sure they're free and clear. Strobes can come on now. Um, um, and uh, for this one, we can actually taxi straight out. We don't need a pushback, which is a blessing. Uh, engine run switch is on. And Mr. Copart, you just check your side and it's clear. And I'll check mine and it's clear. And we're ready to start. Good start on one, let's start two. Okay, engine start good on both sides. Just checking the generators are good and we can switch hydraulics back on now. Okay. And we'll give a quick check on the hydraulics page as well. That's looking good. Okay, so next thing is the anti ice. I'm not going to bother checking that actually because it's not going to affect us on the route today. Um, we'll put the flaps in 10 degrees. And then flight controls, so back on the 
Longly Doodly, uh, Flak Trolls, and just check them quickly. It's actually really important with it when you're flying with the joystick because it's um, something happens and it gets disconnected. You will find out when you least need it. So that's looking good. Uh, passenger briefing, we assume that we've done that. Um, ECAS messages, standard. Um, wing anti ice not required. Seatbelt signs can come on now, we're about to taxi. Um, taxi light as well, of course. Come on. Uh, nose wheel steering can switch on. That normally goes off after the pushback, but no pushback today. And we're ready to go. So we'll get the um, airport plan up in view. You can see us there. Um, we're going to be taking off on five. It's a relatively short taxiway. It will be a left out of here onto Alpha, up to Alpha zero and then um, departure one five and then we'll be following um, this route here a relatively simple route um, ahead to 1.6 miles and then follow the navigation so uh, nav will come on just shortly after takeoff in terms of altitude um, doesn't actually give any limits so I'm just going to keep it at 5,000 here just to simulate the sort of restriction you're going to get um, Oh, OK, so this climbed to 6,000. OK, we can stick 6,000 in now. Sort that on there. OK, 6,000 set. OK, I'm ready to taxi. And check all rounds. That's looking good. Let's check both sides. It should be the Alpha taxiway. We get a little bit of speed up and then we just test the reverse thrusters. So engine instruments are green, idle, reverse, reverse white, reverse green, reverse idle is white, and then idle. Okay. I don't know, there's something about this, it seems a bit sluggish. That's probably me. If the frame rate's slowing, slowed up a little bit, maybe. There we go. So let's have a look. Brakes and nose are steering checked. Instruments good. Thrust reverse is checked. Flaps ten. Stabiliser 7.2 set. It's dry, bleeds off for takeoff. Takeoff speeds are set and agreed. Takeoff briefing is finalised. Um, transponder, that's on. It shouldn't be, shouldn't have left that on actually. That's my, my bad there. Anti ice is not required. So I think this is Delta 2. And we have a Sierra 3, it says. Oh, yeah, I see it. So we're going to taxi to the next one, which is up near those um, that hangar.
So it just occurred to me I'm running uh, my web browser and it might have been slowing up a little bit for some reason. Okay, so we're about to enter the runway. Uh, so we'll switch to TARA. Probes on. Strobes on. Having lights. Let's now bring up the electric page one minute. And yeah, just make sure we're on generators. That's good. Okay. So it's um, it's one five from here. I assume we have taxi um, takeoff clearance. So lining up now. Cross speed can come off as well. So different to um, Dansk. Here we go. Take off power set. A speed of life, engine instruments green. 80 knots. 100, B1, rotate. Attitude hold, climb power set. Looking for 170 for flaps up, 170 we've got flaps up, and onto nav mode. There it is. So we should be uh, fly that for a few seconds and then a right turn. show you the city so there's Warsaw Airport and the city behind okay we're clear to flight level 120. Let's go. And we're cleared up to 200. And we'll start accelerating a bit.
and we've gone through 10,000 so we can do our um, after takeoff checks uh, flaps and gear up um, landing lights can come off um, APU can come off uh, altimeter set on um, standard barometer and bleeds can come on Uh, smooth conditions, so I am going to put it into speed mode for a minute. Didn't mean to do that. Um, we'll switch the passenger seatbelt sign off as it's fairly um, calm. Uh, we've cleared now 280. Absolutely crystal clear where we are. Makes up for the foggy departure from Gdansk. Fifty six to the top of descent. Um, we'll set the decision height this time, should have set that before, it was 200 feet, we'll add 50 for safety. That's, that's. 250 set. I think we can just switch the weather radar off as well. So it's one of my views is the uh, passenger cab cabin here. And then we have a right wing view and a left wing view. I think everyone has one of those. And the other views are um, the sort of jump seat, close up of the instruments, and then captain's side window and the first officer side window. And then captain first officer view. Nearly there. thousand to go <clears throat> Socks are at this time. 
and then we will change this to EPWR, which is Rock Law. Ten twenty one again, same altimeter for um, Warsaw. Let's check our progress. Thirty two to top of descent. So the star is bringing us on to um, the Whiskey Romeo 704 point, and then we turn on to the final approach. And that coincides with the final approach course there. In terms of the altitude, um, 704 is not shown, it's 703, so 704 is 5,000, 703 is 4,000, and then step down and the final approach fix 2700 at um, WR701. Okay, just at the top of the descent now. And it's tagged 6,000, it's our first descent point. We'll bring the spoilers to three quarters approximately. It should hold the, uh, the uh, indicated airspeed. Just a few features on Navigraph charts. Um, so um, they have recently released the iOS uh, update. Um, so um, just to just go through some of the basic features. So um, it, um, at the moment we can see the uh, star in the map overlay mode, uh, which is to do with this button here. Uh, we can also go full screen on that. Although for some reason that's not doing anything here. There we go. So that's now showing that as a standalone chart. Um, that little layers icon is the one that will bring that into view. Um, and then we have these controls, which are the opacity controls. And you see as I go down on opacity, it's actually showing more and more behind. Uh, but the default is 90%, which is about right, I think. And then this pin is whether it pins it to the bottom or not. So at the moment, that's pinned to the bottom of the screen. And then we can just click the X and that should get rid of it. It seemed to be very responsive tonight though. Um, and then across the top we've got the route um, with the distance, 166 nautical miles in this, um, in this case. Um, and then we can also, um, if we click on the departure or destination, so Warsaw, for example, we can then open charts and we can access all the charts we need from there. Uh, same with the destination, we do the same thing. Um, but there's also this pull down menu, um, which gives you the ability to then choose um, the right runway and the departure point or for the arrivals. Um, so, for example, for the arrivals, if you hadn't already got that set, you can click on the eye icon on arrivals and it will show you 
all of the arrivals into the airport um, and you can see the UVIV 1 uniform is which is the one we're following is the obvious choice there but depending on which way you're coming from you might choose something else same with the approaches uh, just um, two runway two ILS approaches um, instrument approaches here uh, so it's mapping that out in colors but again my, my only criticism or observation is that you um, if you do get for example arrival and you say okay I want the UVIV 1 uniform and you click on it um, it doesn't do anything. You have to then remember that and then um, select it some some other way. Uh, so that's my only slight disappointment with it. But overall, I'm I'm quite happy. So that's good. I don't have to get rid of this now. I think you just click close. There's a few usability points like that, but um, overall very good. Uh, so that is the. That's the R nav. Um, we will go for the ILS 29 actually, which is what we want. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Approach 29. Well, it's tagged on the bottom there. Okay, let's just bring that to view. There it is. So saying that, um, Navgraph Charts has gone through a an amazing improvement, in my opinion. Um, I, I used to use ForeFlight, and um, Navgraph Charts is quite sufficient, really, for IFR flying. I think um, it would be disappointing if you were more of a VFR pilot. Um, it doesn't really support uh, visual flying at all. Uh, so it's really IFR, but it covers the whole globe and it's got the FMS updates uh, for most of the aircraft. So it's a really good value package. Uh, I think there are some opportunities to tweak it a little bit. Um, there's always improvements that can be made. But I'm very happy with it. I'm happy to fly without um, for flight now for uh, IFO flying. Okay, weather update, wind is calm, um, temperature is 12, dew point 11, and altimeter is 1021. So no change to our landing runway. Need to start slowing down now. Because at 704, we've got a 90 degree turn. So I'll let the speed bleed off to 210. side of the airport yet. Let's bring this down manually to 2700.
Anastasia Flap. And we are more or less in line with the runway now, so I'm going to centre the heading, switch us into heading mode, and then switch to nav 1, and back to nav, and that should follow the localizer, and we'll put it into approach mode as well. So I'll capture the glide slope at the right point. Feed in a bit of power to hold 210. Okay, approach checks APM bleeds. AP you can stay off. Landing data is printing. That's 117 is the VREF. Uh, landing day, sorry, approach set up and crew briefed. It's the ILS. We've uh, uh, we got the ident signal on and we're on the localizer about to establish on the glide slope. Missed approach will be straight ahead and as to 3000 then as directed, uh, left and right hydraulic pump, no change. Uh, looking to inset the glide slope at 7.01, so another mile, two miles even. And that's Presuming that's the city of Rocklaw. There it is. The SAS. That is presumably stop. Um, I don't think DD is, um, has done a city for Rocklaw yet. As local uh, glycerin coming in now. Half degree up. Uh, gear down. Uh, we stick another stage of flapping as well. Runway is visible straight ahead. Uh, good visibility today, so there should be no problems. And gears down, three greens. So this is always a good point to set the missed approach altitude, 3000. Uh, we could also follow the um, FMS it's just runway heading to 3000, that's the missed approach. So gears down now, landing lights are on. We'll set the nose wheel landing light as well. Flaps are 20 degrees, we'll set 30 at on short final. So that's stock um, city for Rocklaw, I think. I'm pretty sure um, this airport scenery, which is uh, part of one of the packages, is uh, just for the airport. I'll hold the speed there for the moment. Hold it, not increase it. Final stage of flap can come in now, and we'll drift back slowly to 117 RV ref speed.
Decisions 250. So a very slight, um, well no wind from the right actually. Minimums will continue. Autopiloting disconnecting now. Realise the turn off is actually not until the end, so we may as well let it roll. Okay, there is one there. Oh, that's that one. Okay, it's a bit of lag on the old map. <laughs> yeah. This drives off. Taxi lights can come on. Let's just run a quick replay.
That'll do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hop in this one, number four. I'll do. With a marshaller as well, that's good. Look at that. Welcome to Rocklaw. Let's have a quick look around the airport. So again we have the main terminal building. Uh, some nice static uh, aircraft. Um, and uh, again we've got a terminal. <laughs> Not very popular this one by the looks of it. So I think um, uh, not quite as many people in here. But um, nice to actually be able to see inside out. Um, and then the cargo terminal. And then um, some more operations down this end, so presumably some more cargo. And there's not a huge amount the other side. I have some GA, biz jets, that's probably where we should have parked. And then um, modern terminal there and also some non-jetway parking. So that's, uh, that's pretty neat. That's uh, Dushovetsky, um design, um, Polish airports. Um, we've seen Gdansk, we've seen Warsaw Airport and City and here at Rocklaw. I'm going to be doing some more shorter flights between some of those to feature um, some of this work. Um, it's very good. Uh, as I say, I don't think Fidelity is quite as good as all. Orbix, but um, you know it's pretty good. There's grass textures, good runway markings, uh, taxiway markings, very realistic rendering. Um, I am a bit of a fan of his work. I'm very happy with it. Um, thank you for joining me today. I will see you on the next one. Uh, do have any comments? Do leave them in the comments below. Hope you enjoy. Do subscribe if you like this kind of thing. So I'll see you on the next flight. Take care. Fly safe. Take care. Bye bye.